welcome to r slash confessions, where people share their most disturbing secrets. Unwanted daughter. Dear Edith I need help. Being better I was blessed slash cursed with a child that my ex threw down the stairs and destroyed. I wish I had taken birth control, or had an abortion, or at the very least given up for adoption. But no my mother took my child from me before I could put her up for adoption and now 12 years later my mother is telling me I need to get involved, but I don't want to at all. She seems to not understand that I wish she had stayed out of it and left and not need involved, but here I'm stuck between wanting nothing to do with a daughter I never wanted to raise and a mother I don't want to crush. What should I tell her? I killed my hamster today. Hey guys, I'm a terrible person just wanted to let it out, so my gf, and I got a hamster like 6 to 7 months ago, I was the one pushing the hamster, and wanted one so much, I wanted to give it as a present to my gf to make her happy, she didn't want one at first, because we didn't have a lot of money, but with the help of a friend we convinced her that it wasn't really a cost, that's what I honestly thought. So we got one. Spoiler alert we got a cage in a pet shop. And it was way too small, so the hamster kept cage biting, which made me stressed out of my mind. It bit the cage every night, and I was so stressed that I got some sleepwalk-like experience, where I would get up in the middle of the night asking if the hamster got away it was such a mess. I too thought that the hamster would be a friend to us, and that it would be a great first pet. My parents have a cat and I've never harmed it, and have a great relationship with it, so that's what I thought I tried my hardest for the first few months, to be friend with it. I tried and got disappointed, again and again it happened, it's really disheartening, and I think it started making me resenting it the cage biting plus. The total refusal of taming, but it's really not her fault, it's just an animal, and don't understand all of that, I was just having delusional needs, and I didn't even think about the animal in the first place. After a while something happened, I was trying to pet it, but it was in her nest and she started scratching, and it scared me so much, I thought she hated me after that, but it made me happy in some way, as if I got a reaction from her somehow, and I felt powerful, it honestly disgusted me I'm this way. So this happened some time passes, I was working, and I put her on the table while working, and she fell from the table, and again I felt that, I was really weirded out by my emotions, and talked about it with my gf, and she told me that it wasn't normal, and it meant I was sadistic, reminder I'm not sadistic in any other kind of way, nor have I ever been with anyone, and I'm actually really empathic, and if I kept it up she would. End the relationship, I think this was the moment it started, you guys should know I'm terrible with urges control. So for like a month or two I've been bullying her, and torturing my hamster. I've been throwing it in the air again and again, as if it was a toy, it's sick, punching it and other kind of disgusting way, to pass my frustration of her rejection on her which isn't deserved, and when it was shivering, and too stressed to even move I would put it in my hand. To sort of console it, I really don't know what's wrong with me, like I would supply it with torture than console it, all of that in the back of my gf. So today I had her for the day, she was okay no problem, and I got an urge to just be with the hamster, so I took it out, and played with her in my hands and she probably did something, that made my urges come, and I started bullying her then throwing her on the floor then doing shit as usual this is so bad. Then after a while she looked sickly, and I thought it would be okay and everything but no she got worse and worse. I talked about it with my gf on whatsapp, and I acted as if it was illness or some shit and we talked like that for a while. She was lethargic, and had diarrhea and my gf said to me omg she's going to die that's it. I made it several time, as if she was sick, and told her informations I saw on the internet like hamster can die when you least expect it before etc, because she was watching for symptoms of sickness, and was talking to her friend too about the symptoms and everything and it kinda triggered me to act, and so I killed her. I put her in a sock didn't even say goodbye like watch her or something I just took her from her box, and then put the sock around her, so that she couldn't bite, and that I was totally unable to see her slash feel her die, and pressed really hardly, so she couldn't breath. I did this for way more than necessary, because I didn't think I was totally realizing what I was doing. After that I put her on the table, and watched her, and I saw her last 3-4 to four breaths. I felt dead inside, I didn't believe that this body was the body of the pet I had for months. It was the same, 
except the little angel in it was gone for good. After that I put the sock in the bin and put the hamster back in the box and put it as if it died in the night and that's the lie I'll tell my gf and she's probably gonna believe it. Now I feel like shit and I really think I'm going to go to a therapist I don't want to kill humans or any other animals it was purely from the frustration of the hamster. But nobody that is sane could do that. I don't think I'll ever tell GF. Even if she deserves to know. And I love her. And it's literally gonna kill me inside. But I don't want my relationship with her to end I know it's deserved. But I just don't want it. And it's selfish but fuck. Now I'm in my bedroom and the box is in it with me, and it's really haunting knowing in the box there's the body of my dead pet. I feel remorseful, but also relieved, because I know her suffering is over. I'm thrilled to be engaged to my fiancé, but I'm disappointed with the way he asked and with the ring he picked. I know, I'm an awful person for this. I'm so incredibly happy to be marrying my best friend and to become a family with him and my stepson. I can't wait for us to all have the same last name. And I'm so honored that out of 7 billion people in the world, he chose me to be his wife. But, I'm still a little hurt and disappointed that he didn't seem to listen to a word I said about what I wanted. He proposed while we were on vacation in Gatlinburg, which I kinda figured he would, because the smokers hold a special place in my heart, and it was the perfect opportunity. He brought me breakfast in bed at our cabin, and got his son in on it too. It was very sweet. It's just, I was hoping for something more, traditional, like maybe with the mountains as a backdrop. And he knew I wanted pictures of the moment, but that didn't happen either. The ring he picked out is cute, don't get me wrong, it's small and made with tanzanite, which is my birthstone. But I told him I wanted something more traditional, with a clear stone. It didn't even have to be diamond. It could easily be moissanite, or something similar. I told him I didn't even care if it was second hand or out of a pawn shop as long as it was pretty and wouldn't turn my finger green. The ring he chose is cute and I would love to have it to wear on my right hand and I know he didn't have a lot of money to work with but for something I'll be wearing for the rest of my life. I'm hurt that he didn't put in more effort, didn't listen to anything I had said and didn't feel like I was worth investing into something nicer. I realize I'm probably going to be blasted for this, but I just needed to get it off my chest. When I was a teenager I witnessed child abuse, and I didn't do anything about it. This literally haunts me on a regular basis and I have never told anyone about it. I constantly replay it and wonder what would have happened if I had called 911 or something. I honestly don't know what getting this off my chest will do, but I have to. When I was about 16. So like 5 years ago, I was walking into a mall alone and saw a man, two women, and a very young boy, I would say about 4, standing in front of a store that had an outside entrance. No one else was around. As I walked past, the man started yelling at the boy and kicked him squarely in the chest. The child fell back onto the ground and started crying. Then the man yelled at him to get up and pulled him roughly back up into a standing position. He was yelling other things, but I honestly don't remember exactly what he was saying other than to get up. The women, one of whom I have to assume was his mother, didn't seem to react. I kept walking straight into the mall and pretended I didn't see. I'm the kind of person who doesn't do fight or flight, I just freeze. This is one of those times. I regret it so much, and I wonder what else that child was going through at home. I wonder whether, had I called 911. He would have been put into a better situation if he was killed by his family or faced some kind of horrifying psychological trauma that will ruin his future. I could have prevented it by doing something that day and I didn't. I was abusive towards a woman I had a romantic relationship with. It was an online relationship and we never met. I met this woman online. I never thought anyone could love me because I'm an awful person. I'm generally awful, and I'm not just being hard on myself. Anyways, I started speaking to this woman, and after two weeks, she asked me to be her girlfriend. We had never met in person. I was a bit hesitant, because I thought it was weird at first. Then I thought that maybe I was the one being abnormal, so I said yes. I was extremely isolated, and never left my room my room due to anxiety. I began bombarding her with messages because I thought she was ignoring me. 
Sometimes, I would do it, because she had not replied to me in 2 weeks, and other times it was just a few minutes. Sometimes, I would swear at her. I was extremely isolated, and she was pretty much the only person I spoke to for 2 years. She would tell me she was going to meet up with me, and then cancel. Sometimes she said it was, because she was scared of public transport. She did not even wish me a happy birthday, or Christmas one year. I spent hundred of pounds on her presents, and got ready, then she cancelled on me. We never ended up meeting. She told me she loved me after two weeks. She would often not talk to me throughout the day, then at night she would call me. She would just fall to sleep with me on the phone, often wanting phone sex. I knew she was real, because she skyped me often enough. I said, I was going to leave the relationship, because I was abusive, and I needed to work on myself to become a better person. I said, I was going to have sex with people, because I was still a virgin, and worried about what people would say, and that if I got any older people would no longer want, to have sex with me. I said, I did not think I should be in a relationship, until I'm not so isolated though, because I'm becoming abusive through loneliness. I did also suggest at other times, that we casually talk, until we met in person, because I could not handle the loneliness. She just started saying, so, you want to be a whore, and other things. She also, threatened to send out nude pictures of me, when I broke up with her, and she threatened to kill herself. She was very jealous too. She also had a substance problem that I did not handle well. It was just her way of dealing with trauma. She also said she would wake me up by going down on me. I made a big deal out of it, saying it was sexual abuse, even though I knew she was abused. She also threatened to punch me in the face and said she was scared of me. I was trying to figure out if it was me or her, but ultimately I knew it was me and it made me a bad person. I was an abuser. I left because we were toxic and I was abusive. I also did not want to be with someone who would never see me. My mom got cancer and turned into a terrible human being. Throw away account because if someone I know finds out this is me I would probably die of shame. About 4 years ago my mom was diagnosed with cancer in her throat. They caught it while it was in the third stage. She had surgery then a few sessions of chemotherapy and radiation. During this time she was inserted with a pet tube and could not eat anything. I have two siblings one is a preteen and the other is older, married and doesn't live with us. Fast forward to now, she has now fully recovered, but the radiation destroyed her salivary glands and has made her mouth extremely sensitive to any kind of hot spices. She cannot eat dry food or food with any sort of spice, black slash white pepper, red slash green chilies you get it. She is a very strong woman and the recovery was extremely tough and painful, but she still pulled through. Here's where it gets dark. I feel like she has completely changed as a person. She has always been an emotional person, always crying over movies and sad videos on the internet, but now I feel like it has been multiplied by a 100. She's extremely sensitive and untouchy and gets triggered over the smallest things. She used to be a person I could always joke around with, but now it seems she's always looking for reasons to get mad. I feel like she has just become downright petty. We used to spend so much time together but now we can't stay together for even an hour without her getting mad at me for something. She starts crying and taunting me saying things like this is why I never feel like talking to you and it's useless to even have a conversation with you. It's gotten to the point where spending time with her has began to feel like a chore. I literally have to get up and take a walk every half an hour or so to keep myself from talking back to her because it always just ends up with her crying. It's not just like this with me, she fights with my dad all the time as well. My father is very caring and loves her very much. He's always looking up healthy food recipes to make for her and makes her juices and smoothies to make sure she stays healthy, but she's always fighting with him as well. One time they had a fight and she broke at least an entire dinner set. I feel so terrible writing this as I can't even imagine everything she has been through, but it's so hard being with her. I try to stay calm and not talk back when she's having one of her moments, but I feel so, so bad. I literally cry all the time because of her, and she doesn't even know. Her fits or whatever come out of nowhere as well, so we're laughing one second and the next she's crying and slamming doors. 
She's has zero patience and tolerance, and is also like this with waiters. She doesn't scream at them or anything but just gets so emotional if they get her order wrong and literally just pays and leave, even if they are willing to change it. It's so embarrassing going anywhere with her. Sometimes I want to share things with her about my day or my friends or problems that I have, but I end up just keeping my mouth shut because having a conversation with her has gotten so difficult. She always ends up blaming me for any problems that I have. I'm slowly beginning to hate her and at the same time hate myself for hating my mother. I apologize as this is all over the place, but she's just had one of her moments and I'm not in a good place. Thank you so much for watching the video. If you liked it please consider subscribing, it really motivates me to make more of these videos. Have an amazing day.